the story of the goblins who stole a sexton. In an old abbey town down in this part of the country, a long, long while ago, so long that the story must be a true one, because our great-grandfathers implicitly believed it, there officiated as sexton and gravedigger in the churchyard one Gabriel Grubb. It by no means follows that because a man is a sexton and constantly surrounded by the emblems of mortality, therefore he should be a morose and melancholy man. Your undertakers are the merriest fellows in the world, and I once had the honour of being on intimate terms with a mute who in private life and off-duty was as comical and jocose a little fellow as ever chirped out a devil-may-care song without a hitch in his memory or drained off the contents of a good stiff glass without stopping for breath. But notwithstanding these precedents to the contrary, Gabriel Grubb was an ill-conditioned, cross-grained, surly fellow, a morose and lonely man who consorted with nobody but himself and an old wicker bottle which fitted into his large waistcoat pocket, and who eyed each merry face as it passed him by with such a deep scowl of malice and ill-humour as it was difficult to meet without feeling something the worse for. A little before twilight one Christmas Eve, Gabriel shouldered his spade, lighted his lantern, and betook himself towards the old churchyard. For he had got a grave to finish by next morning, and feeling very low, he thought it might raise his spirits, perhaps, if he went on with his work at once. As he went his way, up the ancient street he saw the cheerful light of the blazing fires gleam through the old casements, and heard the loud laugh and the cheerful shouts of those who were assembled around them. He marked the bustling preparations for next day's cheer and smelt the numerous savoury odours consequent thereupon as they steamed up from the kitchen windows in clouds. All this was gall and wormwood to the heart of Gabriel Grubb, and when groups of children bounded out of the houses, tripped across the road and were met before they could knock at the opposite door by half a dozen curly-headed little rascals who crowded round them as they flocked upstairs to spend the evening in their Christmas games, Gabriel smiled grimly.